Simplify CSDM5, not a problem. As you all know, CSDM5 white paper has recently launched. And I'm sure that you, together with many other organizations, have questions on what does this mean for us. If that's the case, then you've come to the right video. Because today, Aynaran Partners is going to break down the most essential elements that we see is affecting companies with the new CSDM5 release. So buckle up and let's dive into it, starting with my colleague Rolf. Thanks, Alex. The first thing we're going to take a look into is the design and planning domain, formerly known as the design domain. While at first glance it doesn't look like there's a lot of changes, in practice there's actually a lot to be aware of while implementing CSDM5. Let's have a look. The design and planning domain no longer starts in isolation. It connects er to early stage ideation and product planning right from the start with the connection towards the ideation and strategy domain. The design and planning domain also allows to be used to the fullest using the newly introduced Enterprise Architecture module, formerly known as Application Portfolio Management. Using ServiceNow Enterprise Architecture, organizations can add business applications as needed to manage costs, usage, business value, functional fit and risk in the application landscape. We're also seeing a shift in thinking. In the draft of CSDM5, we saw that the business application was being renamed to digital products. While the label of business application still remains in the CSDM, it's being redefined conceptually as a digital product, a more modern way of looking at product-aligned service model. An example of that is the new role that is added of digital product owner. If you are curious about digital products and how to work in ServiceNow, check out our extended article in the description below. CSDM5 brings the design and planning domain closer to real-world architecture industry standards. So to summarize, this domain is no longer just about modeling applications, it's about translating strategic ideas into value-driven digital products and architecture. Alright, so now when we cover the design and planning domain, let's have a look at some of the other new areas. And the first one we'd like to speak about is the ideation and strategy domain. And trust me, this will become the product owner's new best friend. The fact is that this domain lives before the design and planning stage. And it introduces concepts like product ideas, business demands and strategic objectives. That means that you can actually trace a service all the way back from its very inception all the way to the end. So let's have a look at some of the key concepts within this domain. Let's start off with the product idea. So the product idea is an item which can represent an entire product, feature, enhancement, or suggested change to a service. And an idea is typically then converted into a demand, story, or project. The other one is planning item. Any type of work that is related to goals that needs planning or execution. Obviously for each organization, this may differ, but it could for example be that you're working towards an MVP version of something, a test phase, etc. Keep in mind, this should not be confused with or replace things like agile development or project management. The third object is strategic plan. This is where you can set the mission, vision and value statement. The fourth one is goals and how they relate to portfolios and investment decisions related to your services and products. And finally, we have target. Target, that is how you quantify how goals should be measured, tracked and monitored. To finish this off, it's likely that your organization are already using some sort of tools for these, and the idea is not to replace them, but to rather integrate them to the overall service chain. The next concept we want to speak about is one of clarity, namely the previous sell and consume domain. This is now known as service consumption. And that makes sense, because think about it, we consume the services. Additionally, you will be able to find three catalogs there, which is the product, sales, and the good old-fashioned service catalog. Let's now have a look at the domain of foundational data, where there's actually quite a lot of updates. We won't have time to cover them all, but there are two key ones which we have seen been a lot in demand, namely the value stream and the business process object. So let's dive in and have a look at what that means.
value stream. Most companies, if not all, has them. So what does that mean? Well, for example, if you're paying your taxes, you can be confident that your local tax authority has paying taxes as a value stream. But in CSDM5, all of a sudden the platform comes with built-in support for this. And that includes, first of all, the value stream category, which is a container for various value stream elements. This could, for example, be a manufacturing, marketing or order fulfillment value stream. And the platform comes built in with 16 categories. Then you have the value stream itself and the name of the value stream. And you have the value stream stages. So different stages in the value stream can use different digital products, different services or different business processes. And about business processes, that is actually the next object we'd like to speak about in the CSDM5 foundational data model. Business process. The platform has since long contained business processes, but honestly, it hasn't been well used. In CSDM5, the business process table is all of a sudden taking much more of a leading role. Companies can now relate business processes to different CSDM objects, but also value streams, and in matter of fact, even visualize and model business processes in the EA module. So each business process can also have a review frequency and an entire life cycle. And as many of you know, there are a lot of regulations out there, such as DORA here in the European Union, but also things like NIST. And all of those require a good inventory and visibility of your business processes. The previously known domain as Managed Technical Services has been renamed to Service Delivery, along with some other label changes. Let's dive in and see how that looks like in practice. The term technical service has been renamed to technology management service. This better reflects its purpose, managing and delivering technical capabilities to support broader business and digital services, not just isolated infrastructure components. It's a naming shift that clarifies ownership and operational responsibility. And alongside all these changes, there's a shift in how we think about configuration items or CIs. Instead of treating them as isolated components, they are now part of something bigger, the service delivery system or network. It represents the interconnected web of infrastructure and CIs that work together to deliver a service. And finally, one of the most visible changes, application services have been renamed to service instances. And what does, does that mean? To deep dive into this, our colleague Andre will explain it more. Thank you, Rolf. With time, ServiceNow has correctly identified that the concept of an application service has become a bottleneck and a limitation for companies in representing their services. Historically speaking, the word application service was perceived as very application-centric and often did not resonate very good with network and infrastructure teams, for example. By changing the name to service instances, we believe that the expectation is for the concept to be perceived more broadly and not targeted towards application teams specifically. In CSDM5, ServiceNow decided to add multiple types of service instances beyond the existing application service, which we believe will allow its users to build better representations and classifications of their services. In 2025, the nature of services has become more complex and more dynamic. A service instance will now act as an umbrella for topologies that may contain systems and application stacks, network components and functions, data services, operational processes, or even logical instances of facilities. We are very excited to see how organizations will adopt this new conceptual flexibility into their current CMDB. Alex, back to you. Thanks, Andre. So, the next exciting part, that is the CSDM digital system model. So what does that mean? Well, all of these objects we've been speaking about, they can actually be conceptualized into different layers. And the first one there is the process layer, where the business process that we previously spoke about connects. Then we have the actual service layer, and that's where we find the service instance, which Andre just expanded upon, together with other items such as service offerings. We also have a functional layer where you can find the business applications and various application CIs. 
And finally, an infrastructure layer, where you can find various hardware CIs and product models and more. We believe that this digital system model will simplify where the different objects belong, depending on their purpose and functionality. To tie it all together, we're going to look at the final update of the CSDM5 model, which is the life cycle. So previously the life cycle has been a little bit fuzzy and unclear, but that has now received major clarifications. And a matter of fact, it starts at the very beginning of ideation and strategy and reaches all the way to the service consumption and how that product is actually consumed within the enterprise. So the life cycle these days, it covers not just IT, but the entire business of the entire business model. And there you can find, apart from ideation and strategy, also design and planning, which involves enterprise architecture, build and integration, where solution architecture starts, service delivery, which is the actual service model, and finally the service consumption element, which relates to sales and support models. Now, we won't have time to cover everything about this today, so make sure to stay up to date for future videos about this topic. So these were the topics we found most interesting about the differences between CSDM4 and CSDM5. What do you think, Alex? Absolutely. So obviously we've covered a lot today. And thank you so much for watching this video. We're going to come out with a lot of more deep dives and content within this area. So do make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on LinkedIn, and as always, continue to stay in the loop. Thank you so much.